Welcome, welcome to this session, uh, which is, uh, it's a really warm room. Uh, let's hope that we all, you know, sort of make it through the uh, session. Some of you I know have been in the previous session, so I, I hope you manage well. Um, my name is Ruben Diaz. I'm the, uh, I work at, here at San Juan de Leo uh, uh, Children's Hospital in Barcelona. I'm also uh, supporting the uh, European Children's Hospital Organization. I'm its Secretary General. And I want to welcome you to a session that we've decided to devote to the idea of, you know, how networking, you know, how hospital networking uh, can sort of support our missions as such. And, uh, and for that purpose, uh, the host, which is uh, ECHO, uh, as I mentioned to you, but also UHA, which is the European, um, European U. Hospital Academic, uh, University Hospital Organization, U uh, Association uh, Hospital that's been also uh, hosting this. And we actually have uh, a couple of speakers who will certainly tell us a little bit how these two organizations have come together, their mission, objectives, and hopefully some of the accomplishments that uh, aspire, that they already have or aspire to have. Also, we will have, and uh, this will be connected online, an ex a European experience uh, uh, by a member of the, uh, of the uh, European Commission who is in charge of the European Reference Networks, a network uh, linked to the care of rare disease patients. And it will describe to us a, a different model of networking uh, but, uh, that uh, implicates hospital participation, clearly, uh, in, that, in, that, uh, in that area. And finally, we will have an example of an of a, of a initiative to bring together, uh, especially to, to capacitate professionals in the area of hospital care and hospital, uh, potentially even digital transformation that uh, we will hear from some, uh, as I, I will be introducing you to speakers. So without further ado, because I know that we're starting a little late, I would like to have uh, Dr. Salazar, who is the uh, Albert Salazar, who is the uh, CEO of Bayabron Hospital. He's currently also serving as the president of UHA. Um, he'll uh, describe to us a little bit uh, about UHA and uh, its progress. So we we're going to switch roles here, and I'll go back. And then um, I'm told to remind you: if you have any questions, uh, uh, there is, you can actually use your app to actually place those questions. Uh, this is a small group. Uh, the reason is that there are some, there may be people connected online. So uh, I'll be, we'll be getting questions potentially from people online and people on, on, on site. So use your app to raise these questions. The thinking was, uh, if you have very specific questions, we would take maybe a couple questions for the talk that has just been given, but then we will leave the latter part for a bit of a dialogue if there are any questions for the four speakers. So we'll do that. So without further ado, Dr. Salazar, if you don't mind, you can come over and tell us a little bit about UHA. <laughs> thank you very much, Ruben. Uh, thank you all of you for being here this afternoon. Uh, also, I would like to thank the International Hospital Federation and the New Catalan Hospitals that give us the opportunity to explain, uh, explain, us, uh, explain to you uh, some initiatives of uh, collabor collaboration of networking in uh, some of our hospitals with other hospitals in Europe, similar to us. Um, as IHUA is uh, uh, the European University Hospital Alliance, and I will I will try to, to answer these four, uh, in 10 minutes, uh, these four questions. Uh, I mean, uh, why we need more healthcare collaboration, new, new opportunities for the hospital that it is uh, involved in the alliance. Uh, until now, it's four years and a half, what, ha what has been the impact of the creation of, of the alliance, and where to start if you, want, you are trying to uh, to start with the hospital networking, what is the, the, the main factors that uh, you have to take into account. So, uh, the first item, why do we need more collaboration between healthcare providers? 
And uh, this is, a, to, to summarize, uh, we, as hospital managers, we, we have to face, uh, as you know, many, many common challenges. Um, but you have to realize that uh, we cannot uh, solve alone uh, in only one institution. Uh, there is a question of many questions of organizational transformation, uh, of uh, competence, uh, competence of different uh, nurses, doctors, and many others, uh, many other jobs that are involved in the in the days in the in the in the day square of the or a hospital. Um, the the challenge of digitalization that it's have uh, come in the, in the present years and is going to be developed for sure in the in the following in the following years. Uh, as you all know, all the economic pressures that that CEOs we have to, uh, to 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 maintain and and to uh, try to to provide with uh, with every day's uh, with every day's hospital uh, the every day's hospital and, and in the and the progress of all the projects. And also, there are some factors that affect every, every hospital in, in, in our country or in, in Europe also with the factors that are involved in the globalization. Uh, which opportunities does a collaborative network bring to our hospital, to the hospital? So some, some factors, some elements that I would like to, to uh, underline Learnings from similar organizations. I mean, for example, uh, UHI is an uh, alliance of, I will show you another slide, the nine uh, uh, largest hospitals in Europe. So we have to, it is very interesting to, to know how uh, in different countries and different uh, big cities of Europe uh, have to manage the, the, the problems that more or less are similar to, to ours. Uh, that bring us a, uh, a fresh you know, perspective of, of uh, an uh, and specialized knowledge. Also, uh, you, the Alliance uh, give us the opportunity to win uh, funded projects if the European Commission that in otherwise, if we were alone, it is uh, more difficult to get uh, these, uh, these funds for, for specific projects. And uh, our our position is stronger to to receive these these uh, European funds, and there are some examples uh, in, uh, that that we have uh, already uh, won, and also develop new solutions to to start projects uh, with uh, a cost and a risk sharing that that the, it's it's low. It's low than if you were alone, and, and uh, in 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 this case. And there is, uh, it is also another question of influence uh, to increase influence at some levels of uh, political. Uh, I will say more more of the health policy uh, uh, at the level of uh, European Community. That otherwise, if you were one hospital alone, this is. Uh, practically impossible to do. So uh, I would say try to uh, perform a little bit like a lobby. How we created uh, the European University Hospital Alliance and its impact? Uh, what makes some things or some factors that I, I would uh, a remark that makes university hospitals uh, different or unique. Uh, I will say probably more things, no? but these four for sure. Uh, I mean, uh, we're talking about attending patients, it's uh, complex care of the patients. Uh, also, uh, the research, it must be included the research, basic clinical and the translational care uh, into practice. And, and the fourth element, uh, it's last but not least, and I, I would like to, to remark this, the, the education and training 
of our uh, our people, just uh, future doctors and nurses mainly, but not only. And here are the nine uh, institutions that conform this alliance, this uh, academic alliance. Uh, here you can you can see the. Uh, from Erasmus, from Rotterdam, Karolinska, from Sweden, Charité, to Berlin, the, the Hospital University of Vienne, uh, L'Hospital Hospital San Rafael de Milano, uh, Val de Bron, de Bar Barcelona, uh, l'Assistence Publica d'Hospitals de París, El King's Partners de Londres, L'Hospital de Leuven, uh, a Belgica and Erasmus de uh, Rotterdam. These, are, these, these nine hospitals uh, uh, have the similar, similar conditions, uh, are large hospitals with university, more than 1,000 uh, 1, beds, and some other uh, factors uh, of the research that uh, all of us uh, have, to, have to be uh, have to have to be in the alliance. From the beginning, more or less from in the in the from the beginning, uh, Karolinska and Bayderbron were the first uh, two hospitals uh, where the initiative was created, and it has been stable the number of hospitals since in, in the last four years. Well. Uh, the EU has vision to build a network of uh, sustainable uh, healthcare ecosystems. Uh, these four elements, I think, that are important to understand what we try to do uh, when we meet and in all the groups that are working in the, in the, different, uh, the teams that work in, in the Alliance, there are more than about 15, 20 groups, to share practices and patient outcomes just uh, oriented uh, to, the, to, the, to improve the care at, at the hospitals. Um, the opportunity to exchange uh, international knowledge between the staff, no? the staff of the hospitals, and the clinicians as well, um, to advise the policy makers uh, on sustainable and, and excellent health uh, care and also collaborate in research and development of projects, projects most of them of uh, innovation. We have, an strategic, we have an strategic plan for uh, the following two, three years. Uh, the, our lemma is leading by doing, and the several six objectives that can be summarized in these four uh, elements that I've already said. Well, that uh, more or less is a simple uh, line that when we were founded in the year zero, to we, the, the, the things that we were focused at that moment was to develop vision, to identify the funding members, the memorandum of understanding of, to set the basis of the alliance and the cooperation, and, the, and create a steering committee that in fact is the, the committee most important, that's the, the ones that has the the, the the real the real work to to make the objectives uh, real possible, and and to employ a project manager that was very important. Without the project man manager, uh, probably the alliance will not function uh, as well as as we would like. Then the, third, the first two years, it was, yeah, it was more operational to start the projects, to empower the staff, to inclusive uh, uh, all members to be really included in the, and, and uh, involved in the, in the alliance. And we decided the presidency, the, the presidency was rotated. Uh, now, at, at this moment, I'm the president of, of, the, of the alliance, but uh, this, this morning I have handed out the presidency to Leuven. Uh, and every six months, uh, like the European Commission, we change the presidency of the, of the alliance. And now the, the main objectives from the year four and five, where we are now this moment, 
uh, we have to develop the, the, this first strategic plan. We are in, in, in this, at this moment to develop the projects, to evaluate, to evaluate the, the main projects, and, and develop the long-term sustainability of the, of the alliance. We talk, these are the difference, uh, I have told already that the difference uh, working groups, more than 350 professionals of the nine hospitals that are involved and in, the, in these projects, you can, you can, uh, uh, can be grouped in more or less in three uh, ambits, uh, the healthcare, research and education, and strategy and management. Or less they have the same groups in the in these uh, three different topics. Some examples I don't have time now, but some some examples of of uh, projects that are going on and some with some results. It's about clinical trials, uh, European clinical trials. This is the European Union the peer deals this uh, uh, this project. Uh, the bench. Projects of ben benchmark between us, for example, the COVID care and breast cancer and some others. Uh, um, another project, important project with uh, uh, gene therapy like CAR T that we are collaborating with, with, uh, with this, uh, with our these hospitals of the with Charité and Erasmus and others and of the uh, of the alliance and. Till now, we have uh, achieved more than 30 million from the uh, European funded projects. This is one of our, the, I think this is one of the strengths of the Alliance. We have made uh, d during COVID, during COVID uh, times, uh, policy statements to the European uh, politicians. And also the lessons we, we learned some lessons that we are not so different. We could think what the difference between a Spanish or Catalan hospital with a hospital of Sweden or from a Belgium or a German hospital. I mean, when we stay together, uh, in fact, there are no, no such uh, difference in, in culture or on, on the same uh, way of, uh, I would say the way of, of um, having the problems or facing the problems of our hospitals and, and the healthcare in general. Um, start with the vision and empower, empower our, our people to, to realize it. And also for the staff members, for our the staff members of the different hospitals, it's an, a, an opportunity to develop professional also, I think. Um, and just to conclude, um, if uh, we stand stronger together, this is the I would say the, the the final conclusion that we stand stronger together to face our shared challenges. That will be the conclusion that our experience of these few years of the alliance, uh, we could say that we are happy all all of us, and we are uh, glad to to uh, have started this experience and now what we really uh, need now is to concrete the projects uh, that are going on in the following year or two years and uh, that give us the, the, this opportunity for, for achieving some important projects at European level that as I've said at the beginning of, of of the session, uh, otherwise uh, one hospital alone it's, it would be very difficult to, to, to get. And the fin finally, uh, this is another project that uh, Dr. Seoane, uh, the last speaker of the session, we will uh, explain to you with yeah. detail, the Healthcare Transformation Academy, that it's a project that uh, it's focused on train uh, of our, sta uh, our, our staff in the latest healthcare developments. So, in, also is a is a is a project that it is included in the in the alliance of the UHA. So, thank you very much for your attention. 
and that's all, Ruben. Thank you, Albert. Uh, this is an example of you know, large academic hospitals uh, coming together, you know, to sort of work on similar, you know, on, on, on common objectives uh, with initiatives especially geared to improve patient care. Now we turn our attention, if you don't mind, to a, uh, a more of a specialty setting, you know, in pediatrics. You know, that's where, where Dr. Manel de Castillo, CEO from Children's Hospital, uh, Barcelona Children's Hospital, and also now in, in his tenure as the president of the European Children's Hospital Organization, will help us understand how children's hospitals are coming together uh, for similar purposes, in fact, you know, but, uh, but with a distinct uh, flair that's associated with pediatric care. So, if, Dr. Castillo, if you could, we appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Ruben. Uh, thank you, all of you, to be here. I don't know if you will survive or not to this warm A room, but I, I hope yes. Uh, excuse me. I, went, uh, we, I have 15 minutes? 15. Okay. But you can also take down your mask. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, I would like to thank the organization uh, for uh, this invitation to present our organization, ECRU. It's a great opportunity, if you survive, it's a great opportunity to, to share with you the, our organization and present to the international health sector, who is ECO. Um, I will share with you these three topics, who we are, why we create a new network, and what we do. ECO is a, is a growing organization made up of 13 leading pediatric hospitals in Europe. Um, ECO started as an idea of four uh, centers, four CEO of the center, the GOS, Great Ormond Street, San Juan de Deu, uh, Schneider Children's Hospital of Israel, and major foundation from Florence. And we have grown until now into 13 hospitals. We feel comfort comfortable in this situation with 13 hospitals because we can share a lot of things, a lot of challenges and a lot of opportunities. But our objective is uh, to continue growing to truly uh, represent the hospitals in Europe. These are the 30 members, uh, Barcelona, Copenhagen, Dublin, Florence, Helsinki, London, Munich, also Paris, Riga, Rotterdam. Uh, this is difficult to pronounce, but it's from uh, Israel, um, Warsaw. All of them, all of these 13 hospitals, uh, are monographic and pediatric hospitals that play an important role in their respective countries. We come from different cultures, different languages. We have different health systems, even different financial systems. But uh, although this is a real challenge, we believe that probably this is our main strength. This diversity is our main strength because we can share. Uh, you have to notice that for us, for pediatric hospital, it's very complicated to compare with other hospitals in our own country because the number of pediatric hospitals in Spain or in Italy or in France are really, uh, is a, a rare condition. Uh, ECO was founded in 2017. Uh, the board is made up for uh, CEOs of the hospital, so we have people at the table that can really make decisions about the how the hospitals uh, are organized. The secretariat is Ruben, uh, is permanently based on San Juan, of the, San Juan de Deu. And currently I am the president, but this is, uh, this change, luckily, periodically. I suppose in two years or one year and a half, I will leave the, the position. ECO is organized through uh, thematic working groups that include uh, rare disease, uh, digital uh, and data sharing, 
uh, staff, especially nursing, uh, green innovation, etc. We collaborate with other organizations with similar missions, for instance, Children Healthcare in Australasia, based in Australia, uh, the ones in Canada, Children Hospital Association in the States. Finally, do, as uh, Albert said before, we realize that uh, all of us are facing the same challenge. Um, even um, uh, we live in different continents, we have the same problems and the same solutions, probably. Uh, why we create uh, this uh, network? We create ECHO because we believe that pediatric hospitals uh, face significant challenges that can be solved or less can be improved uh, working together. Uh, these are some of the common challenges for children hospitals. Uh, in each country, we, uh, we have few tertiary pediatric centers. And then this is an important problem to compare with other hosp or hospitals in the same community. The high cost of the healthcare in pediatrics due probably mm, to the concentration of complex patients in these hospitals. The shortage of uh, specialized. Uh, this is a common trend in other hospitals, but in pediatrics, this is a major problem because normally it's complicated to find super specialists in pediatrics in, in the country or in the city. For instance, in Barcelona, no? we have only two hospitals to go to find talent, San Juan de Deu and Vallebron. No? And then sometimes even can provoke some uh, difficulties because we uh, find professionals in always in the same hospitals. Another important shortage is related with the funds that we dedicate to research and innovation due to the, the small market um, for the companies is not uh, profitable uh, invest in pediatrics. Um, finally, the lack of a unified voice of children uh, hospitals to uh, defense or to advocate, advocate for the right, uh, children's rights. And we believe that working together, we can find opportunities to uh, improve, uh, well, that we can help a pass to improve. For instance, international benchmarking, that is one of the more clear topics that, uh, or more clear advantages to be in this organization. Uh, joint funding application, uh, create new professionals networks, develop research and innovation consortium to apply to European funds, uh, develop digital platforms and data sharing, and work with uh, policy makers to, and other NGOs to defend children's rights. Uh, okay, and finally, what we do? Uh, this is our mission. ECHO advocates for children's health and their access to the best quality care through the collaborative work of children's hospitals. This is our mission, and to make real this mission, we have developed uh, several uh, initiatives, and uh, that this initiative can help ECHO members uh, work together and applying uh, for joint funding networks or projects. For instance, some projects, voices, value of including the children experience. The objective of this project is to improve the quality of care in children's hospitals, taking into account the children's voice, the children's opinion. Or, for instance, I accelerate. It's a project uh, that we collaborate with other hospitals. Uh, the goal is uh, related with using artificial intelligence solutions to boost hospital care to the future. In the field of green innovation, uh, ECHO is very active uh, for two main reasons. First, because the climate crisis really matters for our main uh, stakeholders. Uh, there, are, uh, there is uh, children and, and adolescents. And on the other hand, if the healthcare sector were a country, it will be the fifth largest greenhouse gas emitter on the planet. Then we believe that the hospitals, and specifically pediatric hospitals, are part of the problem and we want to be part of the solution. Uh, 
Uh, so, uh, in this sense, we are partners of uh, this initiative, Health Card Without Harm, probably you know. And uh, we published uh, one year ago our children's hospital, Green Promise, that uh, maps our commitment and support with a healthy environment uh, for children, both in and out the hospitals. This year, we published uh, this uh, to, uh, a call to action in the Lancel Child and Adolescent Health. And finally, uh, not, we are not doing, doing more, uh, we are not publishing articles, but we uh, <laughs> organizing uh, some themes, uh, like a Green Youth Working Group, to translate these uh, statements into action. Uh, in, in the field of advocacy, uh, our initiatives ECHO has been uh, working uh, hard uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, participating with policymakers in the European Commission. And in this sense, we advocate raising awareness uh, about the children's special needs, uh, perhaps uh, children were one of the silent victims in the pandemic response, as you know, uh, or as I, we realize in this moment because the mental health problems that we are uh, observing in this in these last months. We participate in other, in other uh, groups, uh, the European Commission we represent ECHO in the, in the ERNs, uh, European Reference Networks. And we have another specialized networks, uh, for instance, in nursing. In nursing, we established a nursing working group. I think here is Emma, no? Do you participate in this, in this group uh, that is focusing on workforce challenge uh, within the profession? We, we have two uh, networks uh, related with data sharing. Uh, this is a really challenge, challenging issue. Three hospitals, San Juan de Deu, Gos, Retorno Street, and HUS, the hospital, pediatric hospital in Finland, have started a pilot project exploring how we can share uh, data and overcome difficulties, difficulties uh, as uh, security, coding, etc. And finally, we have a working group related with rare disease, uh, that share information, protocols, uh, models of care, and transition for the adult uh, care. And to finish, uh, a final thought. We need to be thinking beyond our own institution, beyond our borders, if we want to ensure that uh, all children have the healthiest start in life. This is our purpose, this is uh, the mission of ECHO. And thank you very much. Thank you, Manel. Thank you for uh, this introduction. So we turn a page now and, and, and look now uh, how other entities have been also interested in, in fostering networks among hospitals. In this particular case, the European Commission. As you know, uh, the uh, European Commission really has no mandate to, uh, uh, to provide healthcare services or, or coordinate healthcare services in, in, in Europe, perhaps with the exception now of COVID, that they'd be more, more actively involved in trying to sort of provide resources to, to member states. And yet, in the area of rare diseases, they have actually taken the step to uh, uh, support and finance the creation of, uh, of, uh, of networks. And since hospitals participate in those networks, uh, we thought it would be interesting to have somebody from the commission, and it's because Jose Valverde, who is at DJ Sante, and he's a team member of the ERN group, to describe to us a little bit how the constitution of the ERNs have come, has come about, and a little bit its mission, and potential prospects, you know, in the present and future. So he's connecting uh, via online. I see his face already in the image here, so I hope he can connect well. So, Jose, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Ruben. I hope you can uh, hear me well. Uh, I will start uh, sharing the, the presentation. Uh, and like that. So, can you confirm that you see the presentation? We, we cannot see it yet. I don't know if we... Okay, I wait. Here we go. I think we it's can there. see it now. <laughs> okay, great. So things work. So thank you very much for uh, inviting me to, to present the, the European Reference Networks uh, in this forum. I think it's very important. Um, myself, I am a physician and I come from, the, from Spain also, uh, from a practical experience of more than 20 years. And, and I think uh, the managers of the hospitals are uh, a, an instrumental part in any networking. And so I am really pleased and at the same time sorry for not being there in Barcelona sharing the, the warm place but also the light. So what, what are the European reference networks? Uh, I'm trying to pass the slide, but I'm trying to tell you that uh, the European Commission, together with the member states, 27 member states, and patients, clinicians, organizations, try to put together after and based on the directive on, of 2011, the cross-border healthcare directive, uh, put in place networks, 24 networks right now, including 900 hospitals. Let's see. I see it's a little bit slow. So this is the current distribution of members of associated national centers, of coordinating uh, clinical centers and national coordination hubs. And I will explain you the difference, but very briefly, because the important thing, as you see, is the density, and that is still we have to cover the whole of Europe in some places. These are the 24 uh, European reference networks now in place. Uh, they cover a wide variety, uh, maybe not everything, but most of the rare diseases, rare and complex diseases. So you have from uh, metabolism uh, causes, uh, eye, mm, children, skin, uh, vascular, it is multiple. It can be discussed if everything is covered there, and maybe we will have to include a couple or, or three more uh, reference networks in the future, but this, this is quite a wide and geographically covering representation of uh, uh, specialists in, in Europe. So the idea behind is we are, do not want to move the patient. What we want to have is the patient connected to the best specialist in Europe. So through uh, telecommunication services and this network, they can find a contact point and then enter into the system, have the best possible uh, consultation done, and then being treated in their uh, local hospitals. Like that, it, it is created a kind of ecosystem where the patients, at, we try not to move them really, because it's not only the patients, it's families and it's for a long time. So what it is traveling is the advice, the consultation, the specialist knowledge. And then each uh, uh, local provider is providing the treatment. But we are not only doing this, we are trying to foster, to create a magma of uh, creativeness where you can develop clinical guidelines, research, innovation, generate new evidence where it is needed, start clinical trials, and also train the people between hospitals. What has been done till now is uh, there in big numbers. So they were burned in 2017, so they are very young. I have to say that this is a still work in progress. But we have, for the time being, 900 clinical 
units, which uh, uh, represent around 300 hospitals in, in Europe, uh, involving 25 countries, not only member states, but also associated st uh, states. And then we have the new figures of the affiliated partners and the national hubs. So wherever there is a country which will not have enough numbers to have a specialist in many of these cases, what we have is a general contact point, for example, Malta, where there is a one hospital that serves as contact point for all the 24 networks. And so all patients with a rare or complex disease will go there and will be connected to the network they need. This is very important, I think. And this is what, in the end, at least we should cover all Europe with this, with contact points that can arrange to reach the network the patients need. What are we facing now? Well, we have been, uh, we opened uh, a new call uh, at the end of last year, or maybe <laughs> even a, a little bit before in 2019, but the COVID took us a lot of time to evaluate. But in fact, more than 600 new members are going to join in, at the beginning of the year, in 2022. Uh, this is 600 more clinical units there will be even more hospitals. So we need also not only thinking about the integration of the networks, but also how national healthcare systems integrate rare, dis rare and complex diseases into their strategies. We are going on with the knowledge generation actions like guidelines and, and these things, but we want also to start doing some healthcare quality cycle that will really promote that the whole system gets better. And in this way, uh, one of the things that is uh, designed by law is that every five years, the European reference networks have to follow up an evaluation to see uh, at the level of each unit, each hospital, at the level of each network, and at the level of the model as a whole, how things are going, and if, and if in fact the political framework we set up in 2011 is working for them, or it needs something to change, or something can be done better. And also, the, the directive has been uh, is being currently evaluated. So the enlargement, uh, not to, to speak again about this, but see what represents. So it's going to be almost the double of today. And uh, of course, uh, the number of affiliated uh, countries and, and national hubs has also completed uh, the coverage of, of many countries. Uh, about the, the 900 units I was mentioning at the beginning, there are 250 more that are affiliated countries, affiliated uh, units, sorry. The enlargement is going to be uh, closed by the end of this year, as I was saying, so the new members will incorporate at the beginning of next year. And we have now the support of the EU for Health program, the next program that is going to cover from this year to 27, giving grants and covering the coordination of the networks. We are still, the Commission has still not the possibility to uh, finance or let's say go directly into healthcare, which is uh, something reserved for the member states. We don't have this mandate still. As I was mentioning, this is something where uh, hospitals managers, I think, play a, a very big role, or could play a very big role, is the integration at national level. They have the units in their hospitals. They know what the patients uh, they are treating, the, the difficulties they, they face, but sometimes in some countries, I cannot say in all, because in many countries the, the situation is well developed, but in some countries still rare diseases are not in the agenda, let's say. There is not a clear strategy how or which is pathway that uh, a patient has to follow. So for the next year, uh, also with the EU for Health program, 
we are going to launch a future action, joint action on the integration of the European reference networks, and this will be launched at national level. So for the member states to join, member states and associated countries. About the knowledge generation, what is being done and what is still to be done is to develop guidelines. It is difficult to develop guidelines for rare diseases. The evidence is low, uh, but we have to, to keep on that. We have to try to have harmonized guidelines at, at the European level. We want to pursue on the mobility program for professionals, but not only for professionals, also for uh, patients, for the patients that represent the associations, to learn from uh, other countries. But for clinicians, it's basic. They, uh, many, in so many specialties and in these rare diseases, you need a specific training, a specific to form in a specific surgery, to see uh, uh, new ways of doing things. And, and for this, we think this is a program that has to be even fostered and, and enlarged. The Virtual Academy, it is a, a, a kind of tool that we are going to put into place. It will be a platform transformed from one of the platforms of the Commission, but allowing for the clinical clinicians and patients to work and learn in it. So it will be a place to put information, but also to put uh, training systems. And we are working, one of the working groups, the working group on knowledge generation is working on a new training and education strategy, because one of the things that is, is happening already is that uh, people training, specialist training in rare diseases do not have uh, an specialty as, as such. Briefly also, quality. We think quality is one of the reasons we have been working in the last decades in, in healthcare uh, in order to, to get the, the cycle running. And whatever you do, you assess, you check what you are doing, you monitor what is happening, and then you evaluate, and then you can have feedback to, to get it better. So we are trying to put into the model the same way of, of thinking. And the evaluation, this is something that uh, is also worrying the, the members now, but, and also the, at the level of, of the hospitals, what will be. So basically, we are going to, to look at the documentation that is there, but we, are, we want also to introduce some qualitative aspects that uh, will allow us to see not only, and as, as year ends are work in progress, not only the, the, the facts, uh, of course, number of publications, number of patients treated, but we want also to see what is the impact on this ecosystem of, of rare diseases, patients, associations, uh, clinicians, specialists. So hopefully we will put it into place next year and uh, it will take uh, some time. It will take most probably a, a whole year. And so for the 2023, we hope we will have a, a final report and there will be a report by unit, by hospital, and by, by network. All the future activities, very briefly, just to end, what you see, uh, of course, research. We have to do more on, on trying to, to use these networks for clinical trials. The integration in the national healthcare strategy and system is key as a way of, uh, of really uh, putting the patient in the center and uh, uh, we have to demonstrate the added value of, of these networks now that are not only working, that are not only functioning, but are also helping as models for, for example, uh, the cancer developments or even chronic diseases as, as a way to put it forward in the, in, the, in the European Commission level or in the European Union level, I would say. So thank you very much. And if there is any question, I will be pleased to, to hear it. Thanks. Thank you, Jose. This is uh, indeed a, a first, uh, maybe not last, hopefully not last initiative coming from Europe to support healthcare, you know, uh, healthcare in overall Europe and uh, making sure that healthcare arrives, you know, at that all 
all member states and all members of the European community have access to healthcare. And in particular, you, you have chosen the notion of rare disease, you know, the, the area of rare disease because of the lack of access that often uh, these patients have. Moving on, since I don't see any specific questions to any of the um, uh, presentations so far, uh, I think Dr. Salazar just pointed out to it uh, an example of a collaboration, of a support. Here we have Fernando Sioani, who is the lead research and development uh, person in the digital health transformation at Karolinska Institute and Hospital. He's going to tell us a little bit uh, about uh, the Health Transformation Academy, an initiative that I gather includes uh, a number of hospitals that belong to the European University Hospital Alliance. Fernando, floor is yours. Thank you. So I'm very happy to be here and uh, presenting you this initiative that we have been working for approximately uh, 11 months, 10, 11 months. And um, I'm here in behalf of uh, a large consortium of partners uh, <coughs> to present you with the uh, Healthcare Transformation Academy. So my name is uh, Fernando Seoane, as has been pointed out. I'm a professor in um, biomedical engineering. I'm currently working at Karolinska Institute as a research leader in medical technologies and digital health. I'm also working at the Karolinska University Hospital as coordinator of uh, research and education activities with medical technologies. So, <coughs> and today I want to, yeah, I want to introduce you to this novel initiative in education about, uh, <coughs> about training healthcare professionals. So the Healthcare Transformation Academy, <coughs> it's, uh, it's built up by a consortium with uh, uh, seven, uh, 17 partners uh, from, from uh, different European countries. So we have universities, uh, research institutes, industrial partners, uh, regions and municipalities uh, from nine different countries. And um, we are, um, yeah, uh, we are led or by uh, by university hospitals. So <coughs> we are together trying to uh, set up a, a, a platform, a, a mechanism uh, for offering a lifelong learning program to European uh, healthcare uh, workers and also health organizations. So this lifelong, lifelong learning <coughs> program is. Uh, it's uh, truly needs driven and it's uh, offering, um, it's aimed to offer uh, a pertinent and uh, also um, adapted um, courses for, um, for healthcare professionals in an affordable, af <coughs> affordable way. So we are <coughs> offering um, a, pa a partnership where we can uh, offer this, uh, these courses and these programs um, to healthcare professionals that can afford it at different different countries. So for that, uh, this year, uh, during 2021 and uh, uh, 2022, we are offering five different um, pro uh, programs, uh, innovation, in, in health, innovation management in healthcare, high value care, leadership development, personalized medicine, and digital health transformation. So we are offering these courses to healthcare professionals with different backgrounds, uh, medical doctors, nurses, IT <coughs> technicians, engineers, but also we are offering this course, uh, this program to health organizations. So health organizations uh, across Europe, uh, they can uh, join the academy through a, a specific li lifelong learning partnership agreement. Um, <coughs> When they do, uh, yeah, we have uh, we have these two uh, potential tracks. Uh, we have uh, the professional joining the academy, and we have uh, a health organization partnering up. So when we have a, a professional who wants to join the, the academy, this professional identify the, the needs of knowledge that uh, would like to uh, to fill up, fill this gap, and then takes a, a course uh, offered by the academy that is. Uh, uh, free, of, free of charge, and this course can be in any of these five topics. And once this, uh, the, the course uh, is, uh, is completed, then the healthcare professional can uh, continue with courses from the program or from different programs as well. And upon compl completion of the, of the courses, then the, stu uh, the learner can uh, get the certification. Yeah. 
Okay. It's better here? Okay, in the middle. Sorry. So the learner can, <coughs> the learner can uh, apply for a, a certification for, uh, for the course and also join the community of practice. So, of the academy. Thank you. So, <coughs> in the other side, if we have a, a healthcare um, organization who wants to partner up with the academy, then um, an agreement, a lifelong learning partnership agreement, is, uh, is drafted. Uh, containing the topics of the of the agreement, containing the the number of uh, health professionals that we will join the academy, and also the number of uh, uh, train, uh, trainers that will be produced in the different topics. And once that that's drafted, then both uh, learners, uh, sorry, um, yeah, uh, health professionals and, tra and trainers will join the academy. And then after that, they will follow the, the courses as uh, stipulated in the agreement. And when they complete the courses, they will also join uh, the, the community of practice and also will have access to uh, apply for the same certification accreditation like the individual learners. So <coughs> the Healthcare um, Transformation Academy has uh, six features that uh, we, we consider very uh, distinct. One is that the, the pertinency of the courses. So these courses, they are, uh, they are uh, yeah, uh, customized for uh, healthcare professional needs. Then we have also an approach, a co collaborative approach, focus on um, or aiming for uh, sustainable impact with uh, external accreditation of, of competence and as well the community of practice and the support of the European University Health Alliance. <coughs> so, when we say that we have uh, that we are needs driven, that the academy is needs driven, is because we, we, we have adapted the, the courses to the, the educational needs. These um, the educational needs that we are targeting, they were they raise up uh, through um, the Life EUHA uh, project, a project that was uh, run by several uh, EUHA uh, members, uh, funded by the, the European Union, and also through uh, surveys through the EUHA members. So that way we have been able to identify the, the needs. And also uh, we have the, the courses are uh, designed using backward design, and the, the material and the, the contents and the methods of the courses are aim uh, <coughs> to achieve the learning goals that they are uh, they are useful for the healthcare professionals so the <coughs> cooperative effort of the of the of the academy is the responsible for this uh, lifelong learning uh, partnership that we are offering together we yeah, we <coughs> we believe that we can uh, set up a life learning uh, program for the whole europe but we can only reach uh, the whole europe if hospital organizations, they, um, they collaborate and offer uh, courses as well to, um, to, their own, uh, uh, to their own healthcare professionals and also workers from, the, from their own geographical region. So <coughs> sustainable impact uh, can be only achieved by making sure that uh, healthcare organizations, they become autonomous and uh, they can actually take care of their own uh, needs for uh, continuous education. Mm -hmm. So through a train the trainer program, <coughs> hopefully we can deliver enough healthcare professionals and uh, trainers <coughs> to make the, the healthcare, uh, healthcare Transformation Academy reach uh, all regions uh, across Europe. So in addition, we have, um, uh, we believe that the Healthcare Transformation Academy has to be something else than just um, good and pertinent courses offered by health, uh, um, excellent healthcare organizations uh, in collaboration with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, academic partners. We have uh, to offer something else. We need, we need to offer a space where, where healthcare professionals can learn more, they can continue uh, de developing further by sharing experiences and also <coughs> by, um, yeah, through cross-fertilization activities offered uh, by the Academy. And then in addition, uh, of course, all, um, all the courses, they will be certified as uh, credits for medical education by the, uh, the European Accreditation Council for, uh, cre uh, cre for continuous med medical education. But in addition to that, we are developing a mechanism for certifying 
the competence of uh, of the of the healthcare uh, healthcare professionals according to ISO uh, 17024. So together with the, the UHA and in this case RISE, a certified body uh, for 17024 in, in Sweden, we will produce this mechanism and we will offer them to to the healthcare professionals that complete the training the training at the at the academy. And last but not least, uh, we have the, the support of the European University Health Alliance in many different ways. So we have, um, yeah, uh, from the very big, uh, we have first several members of the of the academy are mem uh, are part of the of the Health Transformation Academy. So, but beyond the the individual contributions of these of these members in, into the academy, uh, we have the. Uh, we have the, the alliance uh, being part of the management of the of the academy, participating in the advisory and the editorial boards. We also have um, that uh, the alliance uh, supported or helped identifying the the, the needs of uh, that needed to be uh, provide, uh, filled in competence and skills for health transformation. <clears throat> but they also uh, contribute with learners, with competent trainers, and. Uh, also, uh, they support us with both the certification of the, medic of, the uh, of the accreditation of, of the courses, both for uh, nationally and internationally, through the <coughs> through the European uh, uh, the, the European uh, Council for for accreditation. But in in addition to all that, the, the Healthcare Transformation Academy it wouldn't exist without the without the alliance. So it was. Um, uh, the, uh, the alliance uh, who identified a common need among, among uh, the members and they were the individual members the ones that proposed uh, solutions uh, to the to the other members about how to fill the, those uh, knowledge needs so and we did that um, so the, the alliance works as a, a springboard where members individual members they uh, present uh, initiatives bottom up and then the alliance as a whole or other partners in the alliance they uh, welcome those uh, those uh, initiatives and then they boost them up and often they become a european project in innovation or in education and uh, most often they are funded uh, externally and they become a reality so the healthcare transformation academy it's a very ambitious project that started initially with uh, yeah, five, uh, basically five member hospitals and a, a few other partners in uh, in 2021 and we have um, we are growing we have uh, added six uh, more organizations four of them uh, hospital organizations for uh, 2022 and we hope that we can reach uh, we can have a, a pan-european reach by the 2024 so the Health Transformation Academy, uh, we are, just to summarize, we are offering uh, training uh, for healthcare prof professionals in innovation management in healthcare, digital health transformation, high value care, personalized medicine, and, per, uh, and uh, leadership development. We are uh, trying to, yeah, we are proposing this uh, uh, lifelong learning uh, program to healthcare professionals all across Europe. If you are a healthcare professional that is interested to, <coughs> to join the academy, please just uh, visit our, our webpage. And uh, yeah, we count with the support of um, the, Euro the European University Health Alliance and the, and the AIT Health uh, to, uh, to try to, uh, to enable uh, or to uh, equip health organizations across uh, across Europe with what is needed to uh, yeah, to join this health transformation. If you want to join us uh, as a healthcare uh, organization, just please reach to me to my email, Fernando Seoane at koi, k -I dot C. So, thank you very much, and I will have a, I will answer any question you have. Thank you, Fernando. Since you're there, I, I just wanted to raise maybe one observation, maybe it turns into a question. Uh, at least an echo when we've been discussing with our working groups how to potentiate, you know, the professional growth. There's a, there appears to be, and I don't know if that's the case with UHA, and I know that the ERNs are thinking in those terms, but there appears to be a need 
uh, for a set of professionals, both uh, nursing or physicians that uh, seem to, would benefit a lot to have exchange programs where they could go you know, to another center and learn uh, certain issues. I don't know if that's conceived in this program, and I don't know, and I open it up to, to, to what, are, what are the uh, so alliances or the alliance doing or so. Is that something that our organization should do for men and try to even find funding to have exchange so of physicians or nursing? That, that seems to be something that we have encountered in our area. So I don't know if Fernando wanted to address So uh, originally, um, our, uh, core, uh, our programs, they were based, they were uh, aimed to be blended and uh, on premises. So we were, uh, we were planning to have the courses in different hospitals and uh, use uh, use cases as uh, cases as uh, as material to, uh, to for the courses. Then uh, with COVID, we have to uh, change our our initial mindset and we have uh, started uh, running the courses online. Okay, so in this case, uh, yeah, uh, there is no no much cross fertilization in, on on the course. There is no so much co learning, but uh, as soon as um, as soon as um, COVID is, is over, we will um, change back to the original plan to have this, uh, these courses um, uh, offer uh, on premises. And once the courses are on premises, the, uh, some of the courses are, they have a specific target, but others they have, they have a, a broad target. So where clinicians and, uh, and, and nurses and uh, IT uh, and engineers, they, uh, they, they should take the course uh, together. Some, we, we sometimes uh, encourage groups to, uh, to join the courses so because they, they will benefit better if they go as a, as a course. And for instance, uh, in, the pro in the personalized medicine, uh, we are preparing a course uh, that is uh, slightly different. And in th this course, uh, it's planned that uh, clinicians from different hospitals, they visit each other and they see the, uh, yeah, the needs and, and how the different hospitals are, are dealing with, uh, uh, with uh, CAR T solutions so in this case so so we have a little bit of everything depending on as i say it's, it's needs driven so depending on, on the on the outcome <laughs> that we achieve we design the course in a modular way so we can offer it to yeah, specific or broad audiences so thank you well um we well, still I, I have a question sure i, I don't know if uh, jose robert is still in See, online it yes. should be it should be okay jose i have I a am. question uh, what do you mean with the initiative, uh, this uh, joint active to incorporate the, uh, the ERN in the national health system? Does this mean that, that the, you are thinking in to integrate the CESUR with the ERN, or what, uh, what really does it mean? Well, the, the idea behind is that uh, due to the different national health systems and models in, in Europe, uh, nobody is, uh, let's say, targeting exactly the organization of, of the year ends inside the country. So the idea here is to see uh, at the level of the, of the member state or the associated uh, state to participate in a network or in a program, in a project, in a joint action where you can see the best practices in the different member states. So how it is organized, for example, in Germany, in France, in Spain, in Italy, and see how can you uh, organize better at the level of your country. What we have noticed is that some countries, the hospitals do not have any support from the national health system. Okay. And it is key because if you don't organize internally the pathways for the patients, then how can you really organize it in an international level? Okay, okay. In that line, I would ask uh, Albert and Manel, uh, do, you, do you think that the presence of, an, of a European network can help advocate nationally for some of the needs of your hospitals? Is that useful? Or do you think that since healthcare systems are so divided and they're not necessarily, inter, you know, they're, they're financed separately or so, the presence of a network does not provide any any strength in terms of equity. What, what are your okay. thoughts about that? Okay, we think uh, we can, the, the ECO can advocate for better, for instance, for better financiation mm -hmm. uh, to the children's hospital because all of us have, uh, we have the same problem with the financial problems. 
because the, as I said before, because the complex care of the children with rare disease. But uh, I think in this case more uh, psychotherapy of group, more than <laughs> uh, real changes in the, at least uh, at the moment, uh, real changes in the system in the every, in every country. You know? it's, it's difficult to transpire the barriers that there are in, in, in the health system in each country. Yes, I think the, the more Okay. The, the, I think the more significant progress or the, the main things that we can take advantage of the, uh, this kind of European alliances is, is not to translate into the national health system organization because I think this is impossible for legal reasons uh, and, complicated. and complicated, but there are uh, many other opportunities in, in as we have said some of them, some examples of with, with uh, in, in terms of clinical research, in, in terms, for example, of ed uh, uh, education and training, uh, um, sharing, uh, sharing experiences of organization as well, but, and you have to adapt it to your, to your, uh, uh, to your system and to your hospital. Uh, for example, like in the COVID no, times, uh, uh, it has been very useful to to uh, to share the situation and experiences of other uh, big, uh, large hospitals, uh, urban tertiary hospitals like like ours. Uh, so I'm pessimistic in 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 the, in the way of of the uh, more uh, administration uh, changes uh, because I think it's very difficult. But I'm very optimistic of this kind of alliance for these other aspects that are very important also for the everyday hospital and for transformation. For example, uh, to know how, uh, which are the different uh, jobs of the, and the, uh, of the, what some doctors, doctors, nurses, other uh, new jobs uh, that have to be included in the, in the, in the healthcare, uh, what uh, hospitals like Charité or the Hospital de Paris, what, what are they thinking about? these uh, uh, new opportunities. So, well, it's to share the knowledge um, and you can, and then you adapt it to your administration. You, you brought up, uh, by the way, I remind everybody, you need, if you have any questions, you can use the app uh, to do so, both online or uh, in the audience, although we are a small audience, so I wonder if we could just raise the question and maybe I can share it with people online, if somebody has it. You, you, you raised the issue of COVID. When this emerged, there was a sense that maybe there should be a real network of hospitals, especially the general hospitals, which were inundated with those cases, as a way to sort of not only share experiences, but somehow coordinate care in some instances. You know, there was at one point even the thought of maybe sending patients from one country to another you know, in this setting. And I don't know if this was contemplated uh, within UHA uh, in your conversations with the commission or with your respective member states. I just wonder how you address this issue. This did not happen, but in France, mm -hmm. in France happened, but, but inside France, they, they will, uh, some uh, patients were uh, translated, were uh, transferred from cities to another, from, no, by, by, by train. And, uh, but even in, in our country, this di did not happen, uh, uh, di this uh, collaboration of, of with uh, uh, some patients going to one city or another, or at least uh, I don't know, it was very uh, scarce, no, not, not usual. No? Uh, so mm, sometimes I, I think it's more easy. Uh, today we have had the assembly, our assembly in Baba Gebron, uh, this morning with the, the nine CEOs of the hospitals and their teams. And it was uh, we share one one element, and I'm sure you, yeah, I'm sure that we you will uh, agree with us uh, with me that you have the feeling that sometimes it's easier to collaborate with uh, Charité or with uh, Karolinska than with some hospital that are uh, uh, two kilometers uh, away from yours. No, I mean, uh, but for. <laughs> 
But this raises a whole set yes. of new questions, actually. <laughs> yes, because uh, we, t we usually compete and not... Uh, uh, you don't have the feeling that we are competing with Karolinska, competing, uh, have a competition with Karolinska, and it's easier to collaborate then, no? And the feeling that we collaborate together, for example, no? The ones that are seated here now with all the other hospitals, or clinic hospital or whatever, no? uh, it is very uh, difficult. But uh, this is not only a Catalan or a Spanish uh, issue. Uh, uh, you can be confidence because also happens in Germany and in, in Sweden and that. So it's not a question of the Southern Europe. No, no, at no. Least it's a human condition. Yes, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, I think the, the most important, for instance, in ECO, I think it's very important the interaction, the ECO with the European Commission. I yes. think this is important yes, yes, yes. to advocate for children's rights, etc. But in local terms, I think it's important share knowledge, share experience, and with this better uh, understanding how the hospitals, for instance, in terms of financing, with the information that we get from the group <coughs> in the European uh, Hospital Group, we can advocate for better financial in our country. That is not ECHO, but the members of ECHO can get more information and then use uh, this information to better uh, negotiation with the authorities. Mm -hmm. But I think the ECO, the, the, the Secretariat, etc., the main role is to have relations with the European Union, with international uh, options, no? the, the international institutions. Well, let me to maybe end on the, I don't see any questions coming through. So, uh, some of the initiatives. Uh, Manel, you described in ECHO, had patient involvement. Nowadays, I, I think most, most healthcare systems uh, feel that patients have to be quite involved in the, you know, in, in, in the uh, conception, preparation, and design even of uh, how this care, you know, how healthcare is given. Uh, how do you, do you foresee that? I mean, I, as a participant in ECHO, you know, we're trying to sort of come up with models where there is patient participation. But it's not so, locally is easy, but at a European level it's difficult because of the cultural differences. Do you have any thoughts, or does anybody have any thoughts as to how that could be done in an informal fashion? I think we have to think big, but what local. Mm -hmm. And I think the, involve the patients in the, in, the, in the design of care, I think had to be a local level. It's difficult. Uh, to construct a different model of care uh, at European level, I think. I think we have to think big, to think as a group. For us, it's very important to compare. As you know, mm -hmm. pediatric hospitals, very difficult to compare with all the hospitals in, in our local community because there are no more. But uh, we can get uh, knowledge, experience, ideas, mindset, and then uh, the patient the same we can uh, add locally with better information. Um, unless, uh, yeah, we, we haven't, haven't gone through that. You haven't gone through that. Uh, Jose, I may? You, yes, Jose, yeah. I was going to look at you since uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, there's been a lot of patient involvement in the ERN. I, I wanted to, to react into that because uh, really the, when the directive was uh, established in, in 2011, was because it, there were things happening, moving patients uh, across Europe, and there was a need to, to really to answer that question. And there are evident things where you need patients, and you need patients most probably in the future for more things, because the base for many of the no most of the knowledge in many cases are registries at least in rare diseases. And we should see in the future registries that incorporate what is now called uh, real world data. And to incorporate the patients into this will most probably provide the clinicians with a lot of extra knowledge that we were not aware. So, of course, there are plenty of uh, the, the the ear ends all incorporate 
patients' organizations by itself, in, in the sense that uh, the, the year ends need to incorporate these organizations really to prove that they are networks and, and to include them into the organization and activities. It is incredible how also uh, comparing uh, organizations inside the networks between countries has fostered the um, appearance of new uh, patient organizations in other countries that were not organized. And I think this is always good to have uh, a, an organization where you can discuss with patients with knowledge of their illness or their disease, how to organize things. And I remember one of the examples put by ECHO about uh, patient transition from childhood to adulthood and the different uh, ways of approaching the question from France, from Spain, from Catalonia. It was very interesting because the people were having a look and comparing and also seeing what they can do, as you were mentioning also, adapting to the realities of your hospital. Sorry, I could, I could, we, I could no, be Jose, working since, for that. For, yeah, <laughs> for. Since we have you, there is actually a question from the audience, and it says, I'm curious about what value the ERNs see from the hospital networks. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> the, the fact is that the ERNs are based on hospital networks, mm -hmm. on units of the hospital networks. Uh, all the coordinators of the networks are working on hospitals. Uh, all the, the units in all Europe are based on hospitals. Some hospitals count eight or nine units working on different year ends. And what we are thinking, now, well, it was from the beginning, but what we think is that the hospital managers have a key uh, position into how in the future these ear and networks and other networks, by the way, like cancer networks and things like that, should work. Because at the end of the day, they are the responsibles of the human resources to, fa to make face to the crisis, the constant crisis that uh, happen on, on, on big hospitals. And they have to organize the work and also to give the best options to the patients. So. I think it's a win-win uh, situation, but I think also that the hospital managers have to say on how to organize this. Thank you. Well, we're approaching the end of the session, so we, uh, um, I want to, I guess, I guess the messages that we have received, one of them is that the value of these uh, networks, when they can be established, it's really to the uh, growth of the knowledge base of uh, the, you know, the hospitals and the professionals within those hospitals in order to sort of be exposed to different, you know, to different models of care and that sort of supports their growth. That's one of the advantages of these networks. The other advantage is uh, indeed has been brought up is the capacity to advocate for the needs of those hospitals, whether in terms of who they treat and also what they represent as institutions. I think it's an open question as to how these hospitals can impact, you know, on the uh, healthcare, you know, delivery within each country because of the cons you know, constraints in Europe, in particular, because of the healthcare systems are uh, are designed, you know, locally, regionally, and not not Euro at the European level. So I think that uh, I think we've sort of generated interest. I hope in the crowd that has been here. These are, at least UHA and ECHO are young networks. They're still developing and consolidating their, their, their options. And the ERNs are so too, you know, uh, and trying to sort of, and, and I hope that this, at least these three entities and others that may arise could uh, help each other coordinate their work to achieve better results for our patients. I want to thank the organizing committee to be uh, for us, to give us the opportunity to present our networks. And, and just if there are any additional comments or questions, we can do it off the program. So thanks a lot, everybody, for being here. And we close the session. Mm -hmm.